right? This black line right here, you might want to zoom in on this black line right here. That's okay. the bottom of the swing arc. Okay. I'm going to keep my left shoulder in line with the bottom of the arc. Okay. So the, what do they call that? The low point, right? They call that low point in the golfing machine. Okay. So if I, this is my primary lever. From my left shoulder down my left arm down the club. Okay, so now if I set the club behind the ball, this ball would actually be up and inside the plane line. Okay. So this is a six iron. Playing a six iron. Just inside my left heel. Okay, so low point, address. My club face is going to look a little bit closed at address. If I go to impact fix, my hands, I see my hands over here towards my left foot, towards low point. So you have the incline plane, okay, you have the shaft that sets on the incline plane, and then you have the sweet spot plane that the shaft rotates around and the heel and toe rotate around. While the shaft lays entirely flat on the incline plane. Now my hands are moving right up this plane angle. And then back look where my hands are. My hands, from my viewpoint, look like they're covering my left foot right here. Okay. As I continue to straighten my right arm, that ball went straight, a little bit of trajectory on it. And by straightening your right arm, you also created the angle in the back of the right wrist. Yeah, Continued to create the angle. Well, by straightening that right arm, I maintained the bend in my right wrist instead of flipping my hands. A lot of people hit the fat shots because they're flipping their hands and they raise up and come out of posture. And everybody says, oh, you looked up on that one. Yeah, that's a common... Uh, Piece of it, right? Yeah. I could actually set up at low point, set my hands at low point, make sure I've got everything in line. Okay, bring it back. What happened to my right elbow when I brought it back? My right elbow is straight now. Okay, when I bring it back to the ball, it has to bend, maintain its relationship. So I take this up, I'm going to bend the right elbow. Left wrist begins to cock, continues cocking. Hands are on plane. As I start down, my hands down, get my elbow in a pitch location. This is just one way of doing it. Get my elbow in a pitch location. Get my hands through. Impact. I can use more of a rotary motion, kind of like Mr. Hogan did. He had a little more rotary, and you call it in your book, what's it? Called what? I think Hogan basically was a push rotator. Right. He pushed so, with the right hand. He rotated to square square the face at impact. So in your book, you talk about how you observed Mr. Hogan having a rotary motion, but he pushed with the right arm by maintaining while maintaining the bend in the right wrist. Right, which I call the Harley move, and it starts from the top of the swing. So I get to the top of the swing. Mr. Hogan was a little bit like this, so it goes. This way. Right, just like starting or riding up my Harley, you know, you're you're giving it gas, you're throttling, you're throttling it on the way down, you know. Like that. Right. And then he kind of just went and rotated through. What's my arms do when I do this? Right arm bends. Right arm extends. I don't shorten my arms up coming through. Because my right shoulder keeps moving. My right shoulder keeps moving. I don't know if you guys can hear, but uh, he's making baby swings and hitting up against the wall, and the mats are just thumping.